Sixteenth Day of Abide in Christ by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. Forsaking All for Him. I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ and be found in Him. Philippians chapter 3, verses 8 and 9 wherever there is life there is a continual interchange of taking in and giving out receiving and restoring the nourishment i take is given out again in the work i do the impressions i receive in the thoughts and feelings i express the one depends on the other the giving out ever increases the power of taking in in the healthy exercise of giving and taking is all the enjoyment of life it is so in the spiritual life too there are christians who look on its blessedness as consisting all in the privilege of ever receiving they know not how the capacity for receiving is only kept up and enlarged by the continual giving up and giving out how it is only in the emptiness that comes from the parting with what we have that the divine fullness can flow in it was a truth our saviour continually insisted on when he spoke of selling all to secure the treasure of losing our life to find it of the hundredfold to those who forsake all he was expounding the need of self-sacrifice as the law of the kingdom for himself as well as for his disciples if we are really to abide in christ and to be found in him to have our life always and wholly in him we must each in our measure say with paul i count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of christ jesus my lord that i may win christ and be found in him let us try and see what there is to be forsaken and given up first of all there is sin there can be no true conversion without the giving up of sin and yet owing to the ignorance of the young convert of what really is sin of what the claims of god's holiness are and what the extent to which the power of jesus can enable us to conquer sin the giving up of sin is but partial and superficial with the growth of the christian life there comes the want of a deeper and more entire purging out of everything that is unholy and it is specially when the desire to abide in christ uninterruptedly to be always found in him becomes strong that the soul is led to see the need of a new act of surrender in which it afresh accepts and ratifies its death to sin in christ and parts indeed with everything that is sin availing himself in the strength of god's spirit of that wonderful power of our nature by which the whole of one's future life can be gathered up and disposed of in one act of the will the believer yields himself to sin no more to be only and wholly a servant of righteousness he does it in the joyful assurance that every sin surrendered is gain indeed room for the inflowing of the presence and love of christ next to the parting with unrighteousness is the giving up of self-righteousness though contending most earnestly against our own works or merits it is often long before we come really to understand what it is to refuse self the least place or right in the service of god unconsciously we allow the actings of our own mind and heart and will free scope in god's presence in prayer and worship in bible reading and working for god instead of absolute dependence on the holy spirit's leading self is expected to do a work it never can do we are slow to learn the lesson in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing as it is learnt and we see how corruption extends to everything that is of nature we see that there can be no entire abiding in christ without the giving up of all that is of self in religion without giving it up to the death and waiting for the breathings of the holy spirit as alone able to work in us what is acceptable in god's sight then again there is our whole natural life with all the powers and endowments bestowed upon us by the creator with all the occupations and interests with which providence has surrounded us 
it is not enough that when once you are truly converted you have the earnest desire to have all these devoted to the service of the lord the desire is good but can neither teach the way nor give the strength to do it acceptably incalculable harm has been done to the deeper spirituality of the church by the idea that when once we are god's children the using of our gifts in his service follows as a matter of course no for this there is indeed needed very special grace and the way in which the grace comes is again that of sacrifice and surrender i must see how all my gifts and powers are even though i be a child of god still defiled by sin and under the power of the flesh i must feel that i cannot at once proceed to use them for god's glory i must first lay them at christ's feet to be accepted and cleansed by him i must feel myself utterly powerless to use them aright i must see that they are most dangerous to me because through them the flesh the old nature self will so easily exert its power in this conviction i must part with them giving them entirely up to the lord when he has accepted them and set his stamp upon them i receive them back to hold them as his property to wait on him for the grace to daily use them aright and to have them act only under his influence and so experience proves it true here too that the path of entire consecration is the path of full salvation not only is what is thus given up received back again to become doubly our own but the forsaking of all is followed by the receiving of all we abide in christ more fully as we forsake all and follow him as i count all things loss for his sake i am found in him the same principle holds good of all the lawful occupations and possessions with which we are entrusted of god such were the fish nets on the sea of galilee and the household duties of martha of bethany the home and the friends of many a one among jesus disciples jesus taught them in very deed to forsake all for him it was no arbitrary command but the simple application of a law in nature to the kingdom of his grace that the more perfectly the old occupant is cast out the more complete can be the possession of the new and the more entire the renewal of all within this principle has a still deeper application the truly spiritual gifts which are the working of god's own holy spirit within us these surely need not thus be given up and surrendered they do indeed the interchange of giving up and taking in is a life process and may not cease for a moment no sooner does the believer begin to rejoice in the possession of what he has than the inflow of new grace is retarded and stagnation threatens it is only into the thirst of an empty soul that the streams of living waters flow each blessed experience we receive as a gift of god must at once be returned back to him from whom it came in praise and love in self-sacrifice and service so only can it be restored to us again fresh and beautiful with the bloom of heaven is not this the wonderful lesson isaac on moriah teaches us was he not the son of promise the god-given life the wonder gift of the omnipotence of him who quickeneth the dead romans four seventeen and yet even he had to be given up and sacrificed that he might be received back again a thousandfold more precious than before a type of the only begotten of the father whose pure and holy life had to be given up ere he could receive it again in resurrection power and make his people partakers of it a type too of what takes place in the life of each believer as instead of resting content with past experiences or present graces he presses on forgetting and giving up all that is behind and reaches out to the fullest possible apprehension of christ his life and such surrender of all for christ is it a single step the act and experience of a moment or is it a course of daily renewed and progressive attainment it is both there may be a moment in the life of a believer when he gets a first sight or a deeper insight of this most blessed truth 
and when made willing in the day of god's power he does indeed in an act of the will gather up the whole of life yet before him into the decision of a moment and lay himself on the altar a living and an acceptable sacrifice such moments have often been the blessed transition from a life of wandering and failure to a life of abiding and power divine but even then his daily life becomes what the life must be of each one who has no such experience the unceasing prayer for more light on the meaning of entire surrender the ever-renewed offering up of all he has to god believer wouldst thou abide in christ see here the blessed path nature shrinks back from such self-denial and crucifixion in its rigid application to our life in its whole extent but what nature does not love and cannot perform grace will accomplish and make to thee a life of joy and glory do thou but yield up thyself to christ thy lord the conquering power of his incoming presence will make it joy to cast out all that before was most precious a hundredfold in this life this word of the master comes true to all who with whole-hearted faithfulness accept his commands to forsake all the blessed receiving soon makes the giving up most blessed too and the secret of a life of close abiding will be seen to be simply this as i give myself wholly to christ i find the power to take him wholly for myself and as i lose myself and all i have for him he takes me wholly for himself and gives himself wholly to me end of sixteenth day